look at him. Whilst I'm sure most of you know what that is, I bet many of you don't know the story behind it. So today I'm going to tell you why the 101 is the coolest Land Rover you've never heard of. Hello guys, welcome back to TSBEC TV. As you've probably worked out by now, today I'm taking a closer look at our Land Rover 101, which is standing right behind me. We recently resurrected this 101. It had been sitting dormant in the barn for about 15 years or so. And we spent a day or two um, kind of cleaning it up and getting it running again. And now it is running as sweet as ever. We then took it off roading and again, it was pretty much faultless. But I believe there were some of you who commented that you were quite interested to know what it's like to drive and what's the actual story behind the Land Rover 101. So that is what I'm gonna to do today is firstly talk about why this actually exists and then I'm gonna go out for a drive and kind of tell you what this beast of a Land Rover is like to drive. So let's jump straight into the story. So to give you a bit of the backstory of the Land Rover 101, it was originally built and commissioned as a gun tractor so it was able to tow a field gun as well as carry one tons worth of ammunition in the back which also earned it the nickname the Land Rover one ton. Another requirement for its design was that it should be easily transportable by air so that is why it has the kind of flat nose and boxy truck like design because it's easier to load this onto a plane than a conventional car or Land Rover where you have a bonnet sticking out of the front. It's much easier to load them when you have that flat nose at the front which is why it has this unique design. They were originally produced from 1975 to 78 and they made 2,669 of them so not that many in the grand scheme of things and they were all built as soft tops from the factory. However, many of them were rebodied for other purposes. So for example, ambulances, radio communications, and one of the rarest was the electronic warfare vampire variant of which there are only 21. All 101s have the, or at least from factory, have the three and a half liter Rover V8 along with the LT95 four speed manual gearbox, which is the same or was the same as you would find on the, at the time in 1975, brand new Range Rover. This particular 101 we don't know a whole lot about as you can see it actually still has its UK registration on it and if you don't know for those of you that are perhaps new to TSPEC TV we are actually in Denmark right now so not the UK despite this has a UK registration plate so that is basically invalid and it was first registered in the UK. If you go on DVLA, you can see it was first registered in 1995 in the UK and it's left-hand drive. So basically my guess is that this was being used somewhere abroad, possibly with NATO, and then in the mid-90s, or 95 to be exact, or 90, late 94, it was then sold off privately, and someone then bought it in the UK, and it was put on British plates in 1995. And then in early 2000s, it came here to Tierspec, where it's living a happy life on this farm. Up here, you would normally have your tools, so there should be a shovel mounted up there on the top. Then down here, this is the step to get it, and it's mounted on the wheel on the 101, so you put your foot on that. Down there, we've got jerry cans. These panels here, you can kind of see they're attached here or hinged. You can either fold those down or you can take them off completely if you wish. And if we climb in the back now, we get a good view over the cabin of the vehicle. And this is the engine cover. So if you want to access the engine, you have to pull that whole cover off. And then if you want to access the gearbox, it's this piece, which actually makes working on the 101 quite interesting, or it's sort of more akin to working on a boat or something like that, because you can kind of sit up here on the deck, if you like, and you can work down here with all the tools and stuff up here. So it's kind of good in some ways and bad in others, and then you also have a lot of ground clearance. So working from the underside is also easier at times. And then in here, this is where the batteries are, and I say batteries because the 101 runs a 24 volt system as opposed to a normal uh, 12 volt system found in any ordinary car. In here we have, these are, I think that's engine oil, and then I think that might be radiator, so that's where you top up fluids, and I think that's a, about it. Right, 
before I start her up, to give you kind of first Im first impressions of the driving position. Obviously, it's nothing like any other Land Rover, apart from the older forward controls. Um, it's more like a truck, basically. You've got this steering wheel, which is almost horizontal, and you've got the gear lever, which has this kind of odd um, shape, because the gearbox is behind me. Right in front of me, I've got no bonnet or anything. It basically goes straight down, which is quite strange. So you have to remember when you're driving this, you've got 90% of the vehicle behind you. And that's about it, really. You've got a massive kind of center console in the middle here. I think that's about it in terms of first impressions. Anyway. Let's start her up and uh, take her a drive. Starts so nicely, this, this does. Clutch is heavy. First gear is somewhere. And clutch, actually, having said that, the clutch isn't, like, awful. Um, it, it's not that bad compared to what some old Land Rovers can be like. What is heavy is the steering. I don't know if it's meant to be this heavy, but it is really heavy. When you turn the wheel, you feel more like you're turning some valve on a, a giant machine or boiler or something, or, you know, like those things they have on the doors in submarines that you use, or ships. And it just feels, you feel like you're driving something beastly, because you kind of are. It, it's got a, you got a V8 right here. It's massive. And it gives you that sense that pretty much all Land Rovers do, that you can basically conquer anything. It makes you want to go drive up a mountain. Except this, perhaps even more so, because I'm even higher up, and I'm sitting right over the wheels. I feel more like I'm commandeering a ship. Forget driving licenses, I think you need to be a naval captain to pilot this thing. <laughs> You really do feel like you're piloting some kind of vessel. I think that's third. That's third. Now I start to get some of the rumble from that glorious V8. Smart that for the corner. And you, the other thing is that you get an insane sense of speed with these. I don't know if it's because of the height or because you're sat right at the front or because the engine is in your right ear but you feel like you're going a lot faster than you are. You can be going 30, 40 kilometers an hour, and you think you're doing about 70. But even at low speeds, it's such a fun thing to drive. It's a brilliant kind of summer vehicle where you can just take the, take the canvas off and enjoy it like this. You can load up people in the back, you can take it to the pub, you can go out for a pizza or whatever. It's just a brilliant vehicle like that. Land Rovers are, the 101 especially, because you can basically not only bring your mates, you can also bring your family, your extended family, and their family, and their friends, and to quote Blackadder, their tennis partners. And going back to the point of being a naval captain or piloting a vessel, you really don't feel like you're changing gears in an ordinary car when you change gears at this, because of the way you just yank this lever back or have to put it into place. And earlier I mentioned that when they were built, many of them were rebodied into ambulances and radio communications vehicles and all this. And of course, being the size they are and having the off-road capability they are, they make great campers. So a lot of them that have been have moved on to civilian hands have ended up being camper vans. And we saw some fantastic ones at LRO uh, last year and, and the year before. And I can't, you know, I'm not big on camping. I don't like camper vans, I don't like caravans. But, if I had to go camping, I think I'd happily do it in a 101. I mean, you could tra traverse out into the middle of nowhere, and then you've got all this room in the back. Having said that though, not sure I'd want to go very far because petrol might be a bit expensive. I need that music they always play in Thunderbirds when there's some gigantic machine going over a bridge or smashing down a rainforest. As long as it doesn't end up like it always does in Thunderbirds. It's so funny, it's like... It's almost 
always like it has a butterfly valve. When you go, when you're first and second and you put your foot down, you get a lot of the, that whining noise. You go into third and you put your foot down, immediately you get that rumble. It really feels like there's just a valve opening or something in the exhaust. We'll go for one more lap around this field because I'm having too much fun. I think I've made my contribution to global warming for the day, so I think I'm going to head back home. But what a joy it has been to drive this. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this look as well. But I'm not going to end the video here, so don't worry, I'm going to drive home. And hopefully we can take a quick look at the other 101 as well, because there's a few differences. There's a slightly different variant. So, again, let's start her up and go for a little ride home. of gear. The handbrake doesn't work. That's about the only thing that doesn't work, so I had to put it in gear. That was why that happened. Hallelujah! Just thought I would do the last bit of this video in point of view so you viewers could get the opportunity to see this from the driver's perspective as we head home now. I must say, it's surprisingly comfortable. I mean, it's not, you know, anything compared to a modern day car or a modern day Land Rover. But when you consider you're driving a military truck from the 1970s, it's not bad. Because I know how bumpy this area is. Hey, found the gear. So whilst it may have been a lot of fun driving that 101, I can assure you that reversing it into a tight space is less fun. And the steering at slow speeds or, you know, crawling speeds like that when you're reversing is incredibly heavy. So that was a bit of a workout. But anyway, it's parked up now back next to the other one. And there's a little something I want to tell you about this other 101. So a while ago, I think it was just after we filmed the out of the barn video with the 101 on the right here at the end of last year, we received an email from a fan who said that this 101 is one of the rare Luxembourg series of 101s, of which I think there were only 50 eight built and they had a few key differences from the kind of standard 101 and I can't remember the the full list which was in the email but just to give you an example a couple of the visual ones were the tubular bumper on the front as well as the caged front lights there um, amongst many many other things but uh, otherwise you can see looks wise it's pretty similar but they were genuinely or according to the email i received they were generally very well looked after in comparison to many other 101s and it had quite low mileage which kind of reflects the condition of this 101 which does have low mileage and is in very good condition although this one is also in pretty good condition and has still only done 70,000 kilometers so we're very lucky to have this pair of 101s here and this one also has the canvas top that i mentioned earlier that uh, all 101s came from the factory with as well and this one has some passenger benches which are not quite standard but similar to what would have been in there originally and then you can see it's also got the tools on the front which are missing from uh, from the one on the left Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed this little look at the 101, and I'm sure there'll be plenty more 101 content to come in the future. So thank you very much for watching, guys. Don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed. Hit subscribe down below if you want to see more content like this on YouTube. And I'll see you in the next video.